working on uh, on user time. Um, so you can build some, some complex logic around that and have that all being processed by a queue. And if you need guaranteed success, again, you don't want to make a service call or, or do some do an action and then say, oh, actually, this didn't work, and tell the user you've got to do that again. Add it to a queue. If the queue item processing fails, release the queue and put it back on the queue so it can be processed again later when maybe that service is up or, or whatever it was that was, was stopping it happening um, has, has been resolved. So some examples that from projects I've been on, um, publishing user information to a, to a remote um, CRM system, so user registers into Drupal, and maybe we've got a customer services team who are using to be CRM or Salesforce or another CRM for, for internal reporting on user data, so maybe you want to send that data up to, up to that CRM. So you don't, want to, you don't want to be able to, or don't want to have to prevent users registering just because maybe Salesforce is down, um, so register them put the user item or the user ID onto the queue, and then your queue processor will say, okay, get the user data for that user ID and send it off to Salesforce on a regular basis. It means that if, if you get slash dotted or anything like that, and you have a sudden flood of user registrations on your site, again, you're not gonna overwhelm Salesforce or lose any requests because you've, you've tried to process too much. Um, Backend order fulfillment, so we have a process where um, when a user purchases something, we generate them a PDF containing all the stuff they've, they've bought. Um, Again, you don't want to be doing that on user time when they're sat there on a, on a checkout page or something like that. So we put the item into a queue and we say to them, okay, if it's going to take 30 seconds, you know, we'll, we'll sort of show us a, a spooler. Uh, otherwise, you know, come back later and, and your order will have been completed. We'll send you an email when it's finished. And again, email sending. You might have um, actions on your site that, that trigger emails. You want, you want to queue that up. You could do that in a, in a different queue, email queue system or you could use uh, like the notifications module in, in Drupal 6, and I think it does it in Drupal 7. Um, we'll put emails into an email queue, or a notifications queue, and then when the, that queue is being processed, it will send those emails out. So again, it's all about processing a known number of items in a regular time period. So you might say send 100 emails every five minutes, or you know, whatever scales out to, to meet your needs. So some of the gotchas um, on implementing queues. Multiple consumers, so if you've got multiple processes consuming items from the same queue, unless you can guarantee or you don't care that you won't have the same item in the queue at, at once, um, then you can get into, into race conditions where one thread grabs an item and maybe that same item is in the queue again for some other reason and, and they're competing with each other about processing that item. So um, in the example about the order checkout that I gave, um, when the order is in a certain status, we want the PDF to be being generated. If it's in a different status, because it's already been generated, we don't want that to happen again. So um, you, you can get into a bit of a race condition there. So how do you get around that? Identify what it is that you're processing. You can use the lock API to secure a lock in it. So you can do lock require, um, pass an ID. So maybe this is you know, your order ID or your user ID or whatever it is that you're processing. And when you've finished processing it, you can call lock release. So if that user is in there twice, um, then it can get processed twice, but only once at a time, so it's not competing. Um, and like I said, check, check the thing that you're locking is in the state you expect it to be. And if you're happy with it, release it, and delete it um, as applicable. So why does um, claim and release fix this? Yes. If you, if you, is, it, is, is this an issue in PHP? So if so having the same item on a queue multiple times, uh, sorry, so having one item being claimed by multiple processes can't mm -hmm. happen. But if you've got say you you so taking the user publishing up to a CRM example, if that user updates their profile um, relatively close together. Um, okay. so you, want you, want to, you want to make sure that, again, it's, it's about that reliable interface first in, first out. You want to make sure that you're, you're processing in the right order. Um, but if one of your processes happens to take a long time and the second consumer comes along and, and grabs later items, then, then you can related get that. Related items. Yeah, well. that's right. That's right. So yeah, it's not a common use case, but it is, yeah. is one that we've, just to be aware of. <laughs> um, so debugging your queue. Because it's running in hook cron or you've got a back-end Drush process running, um, it can be tricky to debug. So watchdog's your friend. Put your watchdog statements 
everywhere where you're interacting with your queue item, debug as much as you're going to need to do, use the variables that you can put into Watchdog to, to, to output as much as you can. Um, like I say, log everything. You could abstract your watchdogs to a, a, a custom logging function, so you, you could have my queue logger as a, as a function which checks the status of a variable for verbose logging or, or something like that, so that if you know you're having some problems in your queue, you could turn the verbose logging on and then that would watchdog everything just so you're not, um, not overdoing it on your logs uh, for, the, for the rest of the time. Um, and use Graylog or Logstash or, or some other logging service um, to save your, your DB log from, from the death by logs. Um, you don't want DB log on, but on in production if you're, if you're processing a lot. Be aware that things can go wrong. So that queue obviously had a bit of a problem. Um, but monitor your queue depths with, with Moon in Ornega. So that's a, that's a mooning graph showing the depth of the queue. Um, trickles along at sort of a couple of hundred uh, most of the time, and then we went up to five and a half thousand. And that's actually from live a few weeks ago, so it does happen. Um, use Magios to trigger off an email alert or a text message or sound a bell when the queue gets too deep, and know what the alert means. So that doesn't mean that there's a problem with Drupal, that means that there's a problem with whatever that Drupal queue is trying to send to. So in this case, we had a problem talking to Salesforce, sending some user information, the queue backed up. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a signal that something somewhere in your system is stopping your queue being processed. Um, but it doesn't mean you always point the finger at Drupal. Make sure your support team or whoever's supporting the site knows that. And things break, but when they do, know that every item that you've got in your queue, so that five and a half thousand, that's a request that which, which would otherwise have been lost. So if we hadn't queued that user data, then we'd have had five and a half thousand user data update, updates, which would have just vanished and we wouldn't have been in sync with our, with our CRM. So implementing queuing in your application smooth peaks, it makes your throughput predictable, it removes processing time from the user experience, and it ensures that problems are handled gracefully and that you're in control. So in other words, as Mark Salmanbaum says, <laughs> He's um, Acquia's um, performance director, I think he is. So he's, he he, uh, he wrote wrote the book on queuing. <laughs> that's it for me. Uh, is there any questions? How do you handle asynchronous behavior in your user interface? So it's just you just give a message, so you're already being processed and check later if it's. Uh, has been successful? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, so in a way, yeah, it, it depends what it is that you're doing. So if it's if you're queuing emails, then you don't they don't need to worry about the fact it's going to a queue, and it might take a bit longer. Um, on the example around um, processing an order for, for PDF generation, we um, we put up what we call a wait screen, uh, which just sort of has a has a JavaScript throbber going back and forth to check whether that queue item's already been processed. We leave that there for 15, 30 seconds. Um, if the item hasn't been processed by that time, we say. You know, things are taking a bit longer than we're expecting, come back a bit later or we'll send you an email when things are finished. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a, a good pattern for, for making sure that users aren't hanging around too long, but <coughs> things can take longer than, than you're expecting under, under load or when things have gone wrong. Have you had any experience with trying to demonize PHP? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so I mentioned Drush there, and there's actually a project called Drush Daemon. Um, which gets uh, Drush running as a daemon. We had that running in production for about a week and a half. Uh, then the lead devs on the project, myself included, went over to DrupalCon Denver. We landed in Denver and we had a phone call saying the queues are playing up. So we never actually got to the bottom of what it was because we were in Denver, so we were like, right, let's just write a custom Drush command, let's have a shell script that executes that, let's have that running, uh, running in the background. Um, so that, that's sort of where our experiment ended with that. But yeah, it's definitely something that I think is worth, worth more investigation. Um, but I'm experimenting I'm doing with production Supervisor yet. D. Okay. Um, but we haven't been into production yet, and I'm a bit scared of doing that. <laughs> make sure your load testing is good. And make sure you test the, um, the scenario where you've got multiple consumers. So try and have all web servers taking taking items off the queue, yeah. um, and and see what happens when um, it, are you using are you using that to then spawn off like a 
a back-end process in Drush, or are you accessing it directly? Uh, well, actually using the cube runner that comes with the Beanstalk module. Okay. So, cool. Yeah, yeah. supporting new... Yeah, so that's using Drush back-end process. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what we were doing. Um, yeah, test. <laughs> <laughs> but good luck, and if it works, post about it, because, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really cool pattern. Any other questions? Are there any other options for um, you know, running something on a like a daemon? I mean, you said you, you run a shell command, is that just kind of in screen? Um, we use, use NoHop um, to, to put it out to the background. Um, you could use Jenkins. Um, that, that, I think, is, is something we're looking at, at transitioning our queue processing to it, uh, fairly, fairly soon, um, just because you can, you can, use the, uh, you can get all your, your screen output to that, whereas NoHop, you've got to trawl through your you know, hop output files, um, which is, if you're running across multiple servers, that can get a bit boring. Um, Jenkins isn't like a big load for the I mean, you know, just sits it, there. All yeah, the Jenkins time. will just sit there and yeah. it'll go run this command, and yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, anything else?